Hi everyone, I'm with Riccardo Casatta, an Italian dev uh, who is contributing a lot of Bitcoin because Bitcoin is borderless. I have uh, plenty of questions for him, so let's start. First one, you are the CEO of Eternity Wall. Uh, can we talk a little bit about it? Eternity Wall is a startup which uh, is born in 2016. Uh, the idea was to build something which is uh, uh, very easy for people to grasp, but at the same time using all the new stuff that comes with blockchain technology. And so I decided to build it. <laughs> okay, so why the name Eternity Wall? Uh, the idea is that one of the property of the blockchain is that stuff go in this huge distributed database, then they stay there forever. So uh, I decided to uh, write a simple clear text message inside the blockchain and so they become eternal and that's why eternity. And I thought that there, were, there could be a lot of use for that but I wanted to see how the user will take these uh, properties and to see what will uh, born from that. You know? So um, there is a physical Eternity Wall, a site, uh, which is kind of famous and one of the first uh, person who endorsed it was a Bitcoin mom, who is the mom of uh, Jack Mallers. Can you tell a little bit more about uh, this anecdote? Actually, is the person who inspired the wall. Oh, wow. Yes, <laughs> there was a tweet uh, on uh, the 10th of July 2014. I remember exactly because it's on my slides <laughs> okay. every time. Uh, so uh, she tell the, the Twitter audience that uh, uh, her husband uh, uh, brought her a love note on the blockchain. And so I, I was pretty curious about this statement. So I checked it out and then I saw that uh, the message was on a website on blockchain.info. So I, I I am an engineer, I, I liked the, <laughs> the love note, but I couldn't resist to note uh, that, that it actually made, make a huge difference if something is on a website, because the website could censor you, could uh, just disappear, while the blockchain is here to last. And so that started the idea to build something where user could like brought love notes or any, anything else on the blockchain in an easy way. So love is quite popular on Eternity Wall, but also hate. So um, what is your policy when someone asks you to remove uncensorable mes messages? So I am the maintainer of the website, of course. So when someone is uh, uh, insulted, uh, I, I, I need to take down the message from the website. I just verify that the person asking to remove the message is actually the person insulted. And uh, yes, that's, that's what I do. I, I, if I add to the side, I probably leave everything there, but you know, it's, it's a little bit risky for legal reason. And in the end you, Maybe, you know, there is a Streisand effect <laughs> when you remove stuff, <laughs> yeah. maybe they take more attention than the, the things that, which are not removed and in the end I cannot delete from the blockchain, of course. And so just check the site which <laughs> messages are missing. <laughs> no, I don't do it. <laughs> okay, uh, you and your team are working along with Peter Todd on Open Ten Stamps. What's this all about? And is it true that you have open 10 stamps all the internet archive? So open timestamps is about timestamping, of course, which is basically proving that some data existed in a point in time. And uh, it's something we, we had for, for analog uh, documents, like the, the stamp from the, um, from the postal office, it's something that that can prove to a third party a date of a document. When we move it to digital world, we have something uh, like, uh, for example, in Italy, we have uh, electronic certified mail. 
which is basically a digital signature from a certified provider, which could grant timestamp to the document. But for the first time with the blockchain, we can do this timestamping in a trustless fashion. And open timestamps, it's all about that. It's doing this in a way which is very scalable and uh, with less trust possible. In the end, no trust at all, just in the process a little bit. And yes, that's what we are doing. I, I am the first contributor of Open Timestamps, which was invented by Peter, by Peter Todd. <laughs> and uh, yes, I, I already had my, my method, but uh, in the end, Peter Todd just created uh, some details and I really liked that. So we just joined the forces. I always say that uh, your approaches are very complementary as developers. And returning to the second question, um, uh, how was your collaboration during this uh, time stamping? Ah, of, sorry, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I missed the no, second no, part it, of it's the it, question. It's very interesting. Yeah, we time stamped the day internet, which is very, very marketing effective. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, it actually course. is partly true. Uh, when we say that, we mean there is a site, which is the, uh, the web archive, which is basically a backup for a lot of stuff. You, everybody could ask to to the web archive to, to keep some, some records for you, like a zip file, an image, or something else. And there is the, the web, the, sorry, the, there, is a, there is a section of the site which is basically uh, saving also websites. And uh, the, the archive, uh, their archive basically, it's um, based on something like 750 million elements yeah <laughs> and there are very much and uh, actually we we can do that uh, we we did that because these documents are already ashed so there is already a, a fingerprint of the document because just reading all those data it's something very very heavy you you cannot read all the all the data very very fast uh, so we leverage this uh, the ash uh, which was already there, and we built a huge Merkle tree, which is this fantastical data structure used everywhere in the blockchain technology, which basically can, you can prove an element is a member of a set with a proof which is very compact in size. So, uh, um, for example, a proof for a, a 750 million doc elements are just 2K, 2 kilobytes, okay. so it's very small. And all this huge Merkle tree, you just take the, the root or the tip, and uh, which is just 32 bytes, and you create just one transaction to uh, put in the blockchain to testify all, all these 750 million documents. That's very fascinating, and if you want to uh, understand more, uh, I will put uh, uh, two links in the description. One is about your talk during Scaling Bitcoin, and also uh, the meetup, Milan Bitcoin meetup, where we talk about uh, this open timestamping all the internet archive. So, what is Bitcoin for you, and what motives you every day in working in this field? So, Bitcoin is the first thing I identify with. <laughs> I, I had some like characteristic in myself uh, that I I didn't I didn't uh, find anything that represent me. For example, I didn't find any like political party to be happy to to vote or or others. Can I can I can I tell you some um, sto a story when I was a kid? <laughs> yeah, sure, <laughs> please <laughs> share. <laughs> when I was a kid, my I asked my father. Uh, how much he, he earn every month, and uh, he answered me, and, and then I asked him how much an house cost, and uh, he answered me, and I said, so I will need to buy a camper and live there for some <laughs> years before I can buy a house, and so maybe I, I didn't even consider that as, as an option, a mortgage as an option. <laughs> So I'm not saying that is 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 ideal. I mean, almost all the time, unless you like invest in something. 
but uh, you know that it was something that uh, it, uh, w like uh, make reason me to to one of the the reason I, I like Bitcoin. Yeah, it's totally <laughs> revolutionary, and you already <laughs> knew when you was a. Uh, you were a child, so... Yeah, almost a child. <laughs> I don't remember, but 10. So you enter in Bitcoin in what year? Uh, I'm not sure, but during 2013. Oh. In, in the beginning, I, I wasn't a very... I didn't read the white, the white paper in the beginning, and that was bad for me. <laughs> I, I was just mining stuff, and then I saw that it was not a very convenient <laughs> so I said uh, this thing is a scam <laughs> of course <laughs> <laughs> but then I, 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 I found the, the Bitcoin white paper I read it and I said uh, this thing could work and the, and you start reasoning about all the implication about polit politics and uh, game theory and the reasoning about uh, uh, the money and uh, how it works and why it works like that and you said maybe it's not so good how it works now maybe people are not uh, maybe the right question to ask it's not how bitcoin works but how the dollar work or how the euro work <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> and because everybody take for discounted how it works and it's like it's the way to go and there is no other option so this is about your past and about the future, there are any techs you are excited about? Yeah, I'm excited about uh, the Lightning Network, of course, because nowadays uh, Bitcoin, it's a store of value, but it's hard to be a, like a payment system. Uh, Lightning Network could help. We are still very far. It's still, a, it's still very experimental uh, technology, but uh, yeah, I'm quite excited and also maybe other Client side validation from Peter Todd. Or oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if uh, if the design come out in the end and I can grasp it, then I will be excited also for that one. Wow. And uh, you're considering to collaborate uh, with him again? Oh yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> so one last question. Um, thanks to your influence, crypto climbing is uh, yeah. every day more popular. We climbed with many Bitcoin experts uh, during this month from Peter Todd to Andrew Postra, uh, in the remotely possibility of failure of Bitcoin. Um, since you uh, have already <laughs> pre-ordered a Tesla, not a Lambo, but a Tesla, <laughs> would you consider um, a career in climbing? <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Yeah, if I, I don't think I can compete with Adam Ondra or a guy like that. Even Andrew Polsa, it's way too good now. <laughs> I will never show climbing to any other Bitcoin because they became too good for me. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Bitcoin cannot fail because you have to buy your Tesla. So. Oh. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> me too, me too. Thank you so much. We discussed a lot of topics and thank you again. Thank you, Mir. <laughs> Bye. Bye.